Hello and welcome to this first episode of Tales from the Cottage. Now I'm not going to lie to you, this is exactly the same vlog as I have previously done, but with a new title and in a new location, complete with vlog burner. <laughs> I'm narrator Rebecca McKernan and today I'll be sharing with you the latest offering from an author who I've had a lot to do with over the last few years, Lily Harlem. Now I'll just put this warning out there first of all, this is not for under 18s um, and Lily goes straight into the action so I won't be starting at chapter one because I don't think uh, the YouTubes will be very happy with that. I think that's probably for another site and there is potentially bones in that but for the purpose of this exercise uh, I will read a sample from chapter two for you. But first of all let me tell you a little bit about this book. Uh, if you could just make sure that all under 18s are not in the room and then you don't have to be responsible for <laughs> anything to come. Uh, so Lily writes erotica as you may have gathered. Oh, I thought my fire had gone out but it hasn't. Uh, and this is called Step Brothers. It's reverse harem and uh, well sort of does what it says on the tin. Let me read the back to you. Forgive me from reading from my phone. I, th I think Lily only publishes her books in ebook form so no paper book for me. Better for the environment. Not one, not two, but three sexy new stepbrothers. Hell yeah, life is about to get real interesting. This is exactly what's happened to Clarice Miller. Her mother's fourth husband has three sons, all unique in their all sorry, all unique in their own way, and also handsome, dominant, and so it seems, madly attracted to their new stepsister. And she can't deny she's all a flutter whenever they're around. Her pulse rockets and her skin heats. Which one to choose? But should she choose any? They're her new brothers, right? Isn't that kinky as well, flip. Let's say flip. <laughs> The matter is quickly taken out of her hands when she displeases city boy Parker and he tips her over his knee for a spanking and then gives her what she's been searching for. Hugh, a hunk of a fireman, doesn't have a problem with his brother's firm hand and soon shows her his wild side. But can she handle the, sorry, but can she handle the eldest brother on top of Parker's and Hugh's passion-infused demands? He's a too hot to handle killing machine who turns up fresh from a war zone, all brooding and mysterious, and with very particular needs. Only time will tell if Clarice can keep her cool when life reaches boiling point, if she'll be able to bend to her brother's will, and if her body is up to the challenge of taking everything they have to offer at the same time. This sexy book contains hanky-panky spanking and step-sibling shenanigans. Please do not buy if such material offends you. And I will also say, you might want to stop listening at this point <laughs> if you're not into such things. But, you know, it's completely fine. But um, there's a caveat, all right? <laughs> if you want something a bit tamer, I've got plenty of other books you can choose from. <laughs> so just to reiterate, this is the first section of Chapter 2 of Lily Harlem's new offering, Step Brothers. And I'm filling whilst I find the, whilst I find the page. There we go. <laughs> um... This chapter will have bad language in it. I said flip before, I'm not going to say flip again, it doesn't feel right. Fuck, fuck, fuck! Clarice turned to the digital, digital clock beside the hotel bed. How the heck had she managed to sleep until lunchtime? And today is a lunchtime of all days. Her mother would be furious, and she was generally low-grade disappointed with Clarice anyway. Ah, good, you're awake. Sean stood before her, dressed smartly almost as if he'd re-ironed his shirt and pants. A waft of hotel shower gel and shampoo lingered, overly soapy and pine-scented. Check out is at noon. You've got two minutes. Why didn't you wake me? She leaped naked from the bed. Figured you'd need the rest after that early morning orgasm. He picked up his phone and wallet and slid them into his pockets. Orgasm number four, if I'm correct. Stooping, she snatched up her panties. Oh, bloody hell! They were ripped and of no use. Thanks for that. She slung them in the direction of the bin. They landed half on it. I did warn you. She grunted and snatched up her bra, quickly put it on, and then found her shirt. I need to go, he said, tapping his watch. Got somewhere to be. Oh, yeah? She rammed her arms into her shirt and glanced in the mirror. She groaned. Her hair was that well and truly fucked style. She... Oh, I said that really? Oh, I shouldn't be saying this word. It's not me. 
Let me try that again. Her help. Her hair was that well and truly fucked style she so often sported on a Sunday morning. Yeah, so I'll see you around. He gestured to the door. Whatever. Where the heck had her trousers gone? She coughed as she continued to search. Clarice. Ah, there they were, crumpled by the full-length mirror. She shot around the bed and grabbed them. Clarice. His voice was deep and loud. What? She frowned at him and with fumbling hands tried to switch her pants to the right way around. I mean it. Be careful getting your kicks with strangers. You're a nice chick, hot, and you're a fucking wildcat in bed, and I've got the wounds to prove it. He reached over his right shoulder, pulled a face. I'm sure you could have any guy you choose. A long-term relationship wouldn't be a bad thing. His dark eyebrows pulled low. Would it? Why? You offering? Ah, uh, no. He'd spoken quickly, definitely. My point exactly. I don't mean it's just with my job and one night stands suit me too. Guys like to fuck, so do girls. We like to fuck too, you know. I know that. And for the record, you're a great fuck. Gee, thanks for the compliment. He sighed and stepped past her toward the door. I'm just saying be careful, okay? Maybe get in the habit of telling someone you trust where you're going to be and what time you'll be home. What are you, my bloody mother? She wriggled into her pants, who, by the way, is only going to add to my hangover because I have to go and see her now. He opened the door. You're lucky to be seeing family. I've had to say goodbye to mine for a while. You have? Yeah, this work thing. He signalled for her to leave the room. She frowned, gathered her shoes, phone and purse, then walked barefoot into the carpeted corridor. Security job, right? Right. Clarice let herself into her flat. The familiar... I'm sorry, I think there should have been a page break there that I missed. <laughs> and in fact, let's pause it there. <laughs> Although there was bad language, uh, there was no sexual content. However, it does give you quite a good idea of what you might have missed in chapter one. <laughs> so if you would like to read that book from the start, I invite you to check out Step Brothers by Lily Harlem on Audible, um, Amazon and iTunes, I believe. You can find me. Uh, by searching on Audible for Rebecca McKernan. I don't really use my website anymore. I'm not very good at it. Don't enjoy it. You can also look for me on YouTube. <laughs> I have a whole plethora of projects that you might find interesting. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining me for episode one of... Oh, I was going to call it something else then. <laughs> of Tales from the Cottage. That's what we're calling this now. Uh, and I shall see you very soon. Mwah.